Hey yo. Wanted to start out by saying what up and say that um I picked today to be a good day to look at the market and do a update on my uh, stash portfolio, which is the portfolio we've been talking about the most. And mainly the reason why is because the market has been doing, you know, a spiral down. A lot of people's lost a lot of money, of course. And um, the Fed just keep hiking rates and plan to hike rates into, you know, this year, 2023, throughout the year. Even though the numbers are, I guess, CPI numbers or whatever, or overall numbers are looking a little bit better, um, even... After the Fed's hiking rates, I'm still analyzing my stocks, and I'm noticing that some stocks are still in the green. They're still going up, and I'm in a positive, um, even though right now the market is supposed to be moving towards a recession. We're supposed to be moving towards war, inflation, maybe even hyperinflation. Uh, right now, we may even be in the middle of war. You know, for some of the people who know about the bombing of the pipelines, the Russian pipelines and all. And even if not an all-out war, just a war on goods and commodities and, you know, trade and barter and stuff like that. Mainly oil, energy. So, even though the economy is, I guess, supposed to be going down, I'm noticing some of my stocks are going up which is a little weird, but then I know, I feel like, I apologize. Kind of get the um, feeling that uh, it's going to go down again, um, especially with what the Fed is, you know, saying, and the position we are on the timeline when it comes to I guess um, the macro picture, the bigger picture of economics and how we've pretty much had our 250 year reign, you know, over the world. And, you know, you know, when it comes to the American dollar and when it comes to gross domestic product and the actual amount of product that we actually put out, I know that it's the red man's turn, uh, just as written, um, which is the Chinese money. Um, so, you know, with that being the big picture and all, I think that, um, we'll suffer, especially the American economy, um, the exchange from the American fiat dollar to the CBDC, uh, which is pretty much already implemented in my books, um, which is nothing but, you know, blockchain technology and pretty much the feds all over the world taking over pretty much Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, just like I talked about in my previous videos, how um, it seems like we're in a decentralized form of barter or exchange because we're dealing with blockchain. Uh, I'm sorry, blockchain. And, you know, it's a decentralized platform. It's supposed to be a decentralized platform, but if the big wigs own it all, then... There's no such thing as it being decentralized. That's one thing we probably all can agree on. And it seems like the big wigs own it all. Just BlackRock, I think they have like a, I don't know, something, something trillion dollar um, portfolio or, um, you know, account that they manage and it's in the trillions and they just went in and bought Bitcoin right now, you know? So, you know, not right now per se right now, but within the last month. And it's kind of amazing because when I analyze all my uh, stocks and all, what I'm noticing is that ever since like December, late December, right in going to the new years, a lot of my stocks that I thought would go down and keep going down into the new years, not counting the energy stocks and all the crisis that we're dealing with energy-wise and how you can expect the energy stocks to go up, but all the other sectors, 
you know, not all, but some of the other sectors, I'm watching my stocks. I'll show you in a second, but I'm watching them go up when they're supposed to be or where I expect them to go down. But I'm believing that's just a, a small incline as we go into a bigger dip is what I believe overall what's, is what's going to happen, as I was just stating. And when I look at the bigger picture of it all, like I said, the Chinese man is having his turn now at his 250-year Luciferian reign over money and exchange and all the things that follow. Um, and I could be wrong. You know, I also thought that maybe some of these stocks that I wouldn't think would start climbing until end of 23, at least, you know, not counting the war and all that's going on, but, and not counting the droughts and all that's going on. But I was thinking some of these stocks probably wouldn't turn around to maybe, I mean, I said it maybe, you know, early January, February-ish, but I kind of started leaning more towards maybe June-ish because the Fed, kept coming out saying that they was going to hike rates again and keep hiking them and hiking them, hiking them, hiking them, even though the numbers are starting to look better and better and better. But also we have to take into account when it comes to labor and all robots and stuff like that and how they're trying to move the robots, you know, and the labor force and all. So I was thinking maybe around June-ish, you know, for me to start seeing, you know, Maybe my 20% dropped down to 10%, and then 10% dropped down to 5 and then 5 dropped down to 0 and then me overall start seeing pluses on all of my numbers and not just certain, you know, picks or whatever. But right now it looks like certain picks or certain things that I have is climbing heavy, and I don't want to talk too long about it, but I will guess I'll go ahead into it and go into a little bit more detail of what I'm talking about. Um, this being January and right before the numbers come out again, you know, everybody's got to put the numbers out. You know, revenue numbers and cash flow and all that other good stuff. But um, I'm thinking it probably would take another dip before January is out. I could be wrong, but I'm trying to find position and some of you know, my better plays. But um, I did spread my time out to finalize my position where I at least want to be finally um, by the end of this year. You know, even if I'm into the plus and I'm still buying, then I'm, I'm willing to finalize my purchases, you know, for the most part by the end of this year, if I'm lucky enough. If I can drive the amount of money or revenue that I want to drive to get it where I want, it's where I'm at now. But here we go. One second. All right, I'm back. Um, as it stands right now, as you can see where I'm at, uh, my loss is right there. The dollar change, that's my loss. That's my percent to loss. Mm, kind of bad, but could be worse, especially, you know, given the circumstances of everything that we've gone through in the last couple of years or maybe, you know, year or so. Um, I, to be honest with you, I expect that, uh, percent change to go up to maybe another 30%. Um, something tells me that it could climb as high as 30, maybe even 40% before it's all said and done, maybe even this year. Um, and I could be also wrong. I could probably see this 18% start to bend back towards the 0%. And then me start moving in a positive, and you see that dollar change go down to zero, and then me start moving into a positive on the whole portfolio overall. But um, this is where I'm at minus the 66 you see sitting there to throw into something that I'm looking at throwing it into. But um, as you can see, these are my top holdings. Shows how balanced my portfolio is right there. How balanced is your portfolio? Keep up your progress. I'm about halfway, almost halfway. My concern is not diversification. My concern is growth. I could give one flying about diversification. I think it's, you know, some of boomerangs or loopholes or, um, I guess, hurdles thrown out there in this industry that I have you just like all other facets of life. 
um, distracted. I always use that big word, that big D word, distracted. It's like being on distracted on Jesus when no one ever asks about the spirit within inside Jesus. That big word distraction is not too far off with big word deceit. So, and knowledge is power. And, you know, I like to be unorthodox in my way of speaking and my way of communicating. And I like to talk about things that no one talks about. And after playing with the calculator, one thing I've learned out of all things is that growth and time, out of all the factors that matters while dealing with investments, is probably the two key most important factors. And with those two factors in mind, my approach to investing is unorthodox. <laughs> and it's very kind of, I guess you could say kind of simple if you're a history person, but it falls back to the big H word, and that is history. I think nothing beats history. Nothing beats facts as long as the history is spoken correctly and not being altered by a specific man or agenda. Then you have some good data, some good stats, some good statistics to play with. And history puts you right in line with that big S word, which is stats, statistics. And there's a lot of power in statistics. There's a lot of power in tech and data. There's a lot of power when an investigator goes in and looks at the end of a result and come all the way back to the origin when there's millions of people that committed that, that could have committed that crime. Um, it's a science. It's a science when you can start the, at the end result and work your back through analyzation all the way down to the smallest molecule. That's a science. That's a gift. Um, and that's the approach I take, which is a very unorthodox approach to invest in. I'm a history man, and I can guarantee you that when I go into some of these holdings, if you do history on these holdings, one thing you will learn about me, um, and I don't do many videos on my portfolio. As you can see, I think I, the last time I did one was like two months ago, and I'll probably do it at that pace for a while, because um, this is going to be like a 10-year thing. But um, when I'll go in, I'll go in and show you the history of each and every one of these. That way you can see my approach and see how serious I am about my approach and see what level my assets are on my list at, You know, when it comes to my approach. And how I'm not just speaking out my neck, but I'm speaking in reality. And I'm basing that reality, that science, that gift, I'm basing that on expecting to do astronomical things like when the stock market is, you know, S&P at, at its best is producing, let's say, 20 to 30 percent, even at its best in a year, I expect to put out 100 percent in a year and not only expect to do that in a year, but I'm expecting to do that over the course of maybe eight to 10 years to give an end result of a 10x. Um, where in reality, I'm pulling 100x if I go 10 years, but I'm only posting, I'm only advertising a 10x, where in reality, I'm literally expecting 100x, and that'll be my cushion, that extra x, that extra zero. Um, so you know, technically speaking, what I'm trying to do is something I'm very astronomical, which is something I think is impossible, and I'm doing it in a way that's very unorthodox. And when it's all said and done, if I'm successful, even close to being successful, then I'll probably go down in the record books, to be totally honest with you. Um, I'm choosing over 70 assets, not counting ETFs. And aside from that, that's not counting crypto investments or penny stock investments or any of the other you know lower cap stock investments portfolios that I have. This is completely talking about mega cap, you know, mid cap. And, you know, I guess your low caps, because that's all stats pretty much offer. They don't offer any penny caps or pink OTCs or anything like that. Everything they offer is pretty much, you know, mid and so on. So, I mean, they have some new innovation, but even some of those companies, you have to be at least $2 to be trading on the exchange or, you know, hold up, you know, a dollar or two to stay on the exchange. So, you know, very rarely you find a stock here on stash for you know less than two dollars and that's it started more than two and then dropped under two in other words so 
just to give you an idea, capital wise speaking and market cap wise speaking. But as you can see, um, just specifically looking stock wise, specifically stock wise, I'll skim through here real fast, real fast so you can see. Um, I'm, I'm more than 80 assets in. Um, some of these assets are very low, as you can see. Dollar cost averaging in. And as you can see, as I start at the top, some of them are a little higher. Giving you that number that I gave you earlier. But this is my top right here. It won't be my top for long because I plan on putting some in, a few in front of it. But again, remember, this is a 10-year game plan inspired by my mom to make sure she knows the one thing I will be able to do is figure out how to never ever want for anything. And simple necessities like food and sleep and, <laughs> you know, I guess, you know, simple things, you know, I'll make sure I won't have to worry about. You know, if I have a cushion like this, then if I'm choosing to not have a place proper to sleep or eat or choosing not to eat properly, it's by choice, obviously. It's not by force. So, and that's, you know, what I'm doing when I do this. I'm making sure my mom knows that while she's resting in peace, one thing she knows is that I'll be taken care of. And my brother would also be taken care of as well. Um, so that's, you know, most of my inspiration by doing this. But not to get distracted, um, I have a bigger interest in Block, for example, maybe Tesla, for example, than Apple. But Apple won't be too far behind the two, just to give you an insight into it, the way I'm thinking. But just to prove my innocence, as I was saying a little bit earlier, we'll go into Apple and we'll do something that I guarantee you that you've not heard anybody pay attention to in any of the videos you've ever seen on YouTube or any other site for that matter. And that is simply a historic approach. Watch this. I'm going to press 10 year. Bam. It's doing something that I already spoke of. My top is 164 on Apple. I'm right now at 132.80 on Apple. But if I go back 10 years, I can see exponential growth starting at $13 exponentially. I'm sorry. Boom. Exponentially from $13, as you can see here, $13.98 to more than $139, which is a 10x. Now, what nobody else is going to talk to you about is if I log out of here, I'm going to go out of here, and I'm going to put the video on pause just for a second, and I'm going to go into a calculator, and I'm going to show you what nobody else is going to show you. I'm going to show you the magic of exponential growth. Not exp and not just, you know, I can show you another example later on of another end of the spectrum or another pole or another vantage point or line of sight, or whatever you want to call it. I can show you another line of sight from a similar stock with very good growth, but it doesn't have that growth over time. So in other words, what I'm trying to say to you is, I may, have, I may be able to pull up a stock that would go from $13, for example, to more than $139, but it won't do it over a 10-year time frame. It may do it over a three-year time frame. And you don't need me to tell you, before I even pull out the calculator, that even though those stocks did the same exact climb, they climbed from 13 to 139 plus, because one stock did it over a longer period of time versus another stock, the end result is going to be totally different. And I know it sounds like magic. I know it's something that a mathematician, a teacher, a professor, not even a college is going to teach you this. But this is what I mean by exponential growth. And I'm going to show you firsthand. Hold on. I'm going to put the video on pause. I'm going to pull up my exponential growth calculator and I'm going to show you specifically what it is that I mean. And I'll play with the numbers so you can really get a feel of how time is so much more important than money. Earlier, I said the two most important things is growth and time. But I'm going to show you how growth will be exponentially beat out, exponentially completely beat out by time. 
the same growth, like I just said, 13 to more than 139, but one has grown over two years, the other's grown over 10 years, and I'm going to show the end result in both. And later on, I'll even show you an example of a stock that I have in my portfolio that has growth potential just like that, or have growth just like that in history, just like this stock has proven in history to have done. One moment. Okay, I'm back. All right, I got up the Market Beat Dividend Calculator. You can go right down to Market Beat. I'll leave a link of it in my description. Also, I'll leave a link in my description if you wanted to sign up for any one of the exchanges so that you can go in and start your own portfolio. I'll leave a link in for Coinbase. I'll leave a link in my description for Webull. And I'll leave a link in my description for, um, I, I'm sorry, Stash, which is what we're talking about. Um, I'll also leave a link in my description for Fidelity, just in case anybody's interested. And my other exchange that I have a portfolio in is Crypto.com. I'll never talk about any exchanges that I'm not affiliated with, that I don't have money invested in already. And I'll never, ever, ever be in my description offering you some type of program or talking to you about or telling you to go talk to someone about your portfolio. That's all a scam. If there's people in my comments putting that there, don't pay any attention to it. That's not me. Aside from that, um, I'm the first person to tell you that let no one ever, ever under any circumstances touch your money. No one under any circumstances touch your money. Never go in on with some guys to do to buy some Bitcoin. Never do it. Don't do it. I would never offer it. I would never even offer it for you to do it with me. So if there's somebody in my comment section offering something like that, please don't pay it any attention. That's not me. I'm not endorsing them. If my name is down there, that's not me. I don't put stuff like that in my comment section. Um, also, uh, I'm not a financial advisor. I don't talk like I am. I'm just showing you what I do, obviously. So with that in mind, I'm going to go ahead into this dividend portfolio. Here we go. All right, this is what nobody's going to teach you, all right? Yeah, everybody out there has probably paid play with a dividend calculator, but they probably haven't played with it in an aspect of time. You know, look at it from an aspect of time versus time, for example. Um, like I said earlier, I gave an example of both stocks climbing uh, 10x, but both stocks not climbing that 10x over time. One stock climbed it in two years, the other stock climbed it in 10 years. And I'm about to show you the difference on the dividend calculator on both. All right. All right, here you go. Um, let's just say we're going to keep the, the distribution annually. We're going to go ahead and assume that we got drip. And we're going to go ahead and assume that we're only getting a dividend rate of about 1%, a 1% dividend yield, all right? And it's only paid out annually, which is not going to make much difference at all. And there's no increase. We're not going to... Um, you know, increase our shares or anything like that. We're going to go 10 years for the first one. And we're only going to put in $100 just to keep it simple because most people don't understand exponential growth. They just look at it like, oh, I heard you put a thousand or a million dollars in this. Just because the big guys are putting in a million dollars don't mean that you can't get good growth potential putting in a hundred. And that's why I'm choosing a hundred. So let's just say I have one stock, it's a hundred dollars and I'm not putting anything in annually. Nothing. I just threw $100 in that thing, and I let it ride, all right? And the other stock, I did the same thing, which is another example that I'm going to, the other opposite end of the spectrum, which is what I'm going to go over with you in a second. But All right? We're doing 10 years for one, and we're going to calculate the dividends. We're going to calculate the end result. One second. All right? Tax rate, zero. Get that out there. No dividend tax rate. We're only doing a 1% dividend yield. We're doing it over 10 years at $100. And let's see what we got. Hmm. All right. So now that's with no expected growth, right? Only thing you see the difference there is just the $9 in annual dividend growth, all right? Now I'm going to put in the growth. Both stocks grown. Uh, 100%, I mean, uh, uh, 10x, okay? So both stocks have grown 10x, but one stock did it over 10 years, 
and the other stock did it over two years. So the stock that did it over 10 years, they actually average uh, expected growth per year of about 100%, so they can actually 10x, which equates to 1,000% at the end of the 10 years, okay? So they did 100% each month, each month. That means that money doubled, all right? So if they put in 100, that 100 went to 200, it doubled. And then the 200 went to 400, and then the 400 went to 800, then the 800 went to 1600, so on and so forth, all right? So you can already see the bigger difference, all right? So boom, I'm gonna hit that over 10 years, all right? That's 100% growth, because they both grown 1,000%. And look at the end number. The end balance is $103,426,041, right? I mean, 41 cents, right? That's over 10 years, just off of $100. Now, I'm going to go back and do the calculations for the other one because that only did it over two years. It still did 1,000%, but it only did it over two years. So I got to take that 10 years invested and go down to two years and I got to do my expected growth per year because it did a thousand percent, but it did it five hundred percent per year to total a thousand percent, right? So now I'm gonna calculate. Bam. Now look at the end result. A hundred dollars, six hundred and one dollars. The actual end result is three thousand six hundred and seven dollars. So imagine I got the same stocks, the same, I got two stocks, right? Let's say, no, let's make it simple. I got two Apple stocks, right? One Apple stock climbed a thousand percent in two years. And the other Apple stock, it climbed a thousand percent in 10 years. The Apple stock that climbed a thousand percent in two years, which is 500% per year, it only gave me $3,607 at the end because it only went for two years. The other stock that I invested in to go back again, it went 100%. It only went 100%, not 500%. It only went 100% per year. It did it over 10 years. And what do I get? This is the importance of time, y'all. $103,426. This is the reason why you do not invest in short-term growth. And this is the reason why I said the oxymoron is in the whole industry. And that is, is the, the deceit, that big deceit word, the big distraction word. Everybody's got you distracted on uh, growth or, you know, fast growth. Most people investing in, you know, trying to get a, a growth out of the year. When I'll go through these videos, I'm noticing that it's very hard to find a guy that's talking about 10-year growth or 20 year growth or, you know, growth over long term. Everybody's talking about, you know, growth stock, growth this, growth that, you know, you might hear, you know, somebody talk about ETFs and dividends. And even with them, you, you know, you're being distracted because if you're chasing dividends, I can show you on this 103,000, if, if at, whether Apple pays 1% dividend or whether they pay 5% dividend, you'd be fucking retarded to be sitting there chasing a 5% or 1% dividend. And I'm going to show you why. We gave Apple this. We gave Apple this 1% dividend yield over a year. And we got still got our $103,000. Oh, that's going to stay the same, of course. But I'm going to up the dividend like as if that really matters to all the people who are even putting out dividend videos or all the people who are even watching dividend videos. Not to take too much from dividend, but... It is what it is, and the calculations don't lie. I'm going to go up to an astronomical amount of dividends, which no other, no company is going to give you no 100% growth per year over 10 years and, let's say, a 7% dividend. And we're going to see what that 7% annual dividend difference is going to make on that total. Again, 103426 41 cents. All right? Let's check it out. One hundred three versus one hundred nine. It's a six thousand dollar difference. Over ten years, it's a six thousand dollar end result. Over ten years, it's a six thousand dollar difference. The difference between the one and the seven percent, which is a total of six percent, is only six thousand dollars, which is an average of one thousand per year as an end result. 
This is the reason why dividends is so irrelevant. Dividends is simply a distraction of your money. If I have a dividend stock that's paying me the best dividend possible, but that stock is, let's say, only growing at 10% per year, and that same stock is sitting right next to a stock that has a potential to grow on an average of 100% per year over 10 years, yielding me $100,000 plus versus a dividend yielding me the difference between $3,000 and $9,000 at the end of the 10-year mark, I did nothing but waste my money and all of my money that I put in that dividend stock. That money could have been over there just at a minimum of $100 because that's all we're talking about. That money could have been over there growing like this. This is what they won't tell you. They'll distract you with their fancy portfolios worth millions and all. They'll never tell you that one poor guy can take $100 and if he's smart enough in 10 years, and let me show you what it does in 15 years. This is why I say when I started the video, what's most important is growth and time. But even more important are the two factors is time and the best approach to take the time is history especially if the history does not lie now who's going to tell you that your parents may tell you when they tell you knowledge is power this is 15 years calculations look at the difference I went up only five more years all I did was go up only five more years I didn't put more money in these guys didn't do anything different from what they've already done for the last 10 years. I just jumped on the bandwagon. I seen what they did in the past, and I want them to mimic the same thing they did the last 10 years for the next 15 years. And if they do that, do that successfully, then this is the end result I get at the end of the 15 years. And that's just on what I showed you earlier, which is this right here, which is unfucking believable right there. Starting principle. In other words, something like this is only made for generational wealth. This is not made for selfishness. This is not made for me to ball out. By the time this shit grow to where I want it to be, I'll probably be dead. But somebody behind me will be very fucking happy if I keep moving the way I'm moving. And it's all because I'm showing you and I'm telling you what really matters. There's a lot of things on this Internet that does not matter. I'm a very smart guy. And I'm not just saying it because I am. Or be, I'm saying it because I love to learn. I've been like this all my life. I learn and understand a lot of facets that make up this reality. So much so that I've even come to the conclusion that this reality is a matrix. It doesn't even exist. It's fake. You know, and I can go into spirituality. I have pages about spirituality and all. I have pages about proving this physical realm, which is astronomical within itself. I have pages talking about, you know, best life while I'm in the lifestyle, still suffering the lifestyle I'm suffering and trying to get myself in a position of betterment. I love learning. You know, and one thing I've learned and one thing I've always loved is mathematics, probably more than anything else, math, any facet of math, whether it be equations and algebra, uh, whether it be sacred geometry and, you know, old figures, whether it be calculus, whether it be statistics, whether it be simple arithmetic. I love math. I probably love it as much as I love science. So this shit right here is right up my alley. And I understand the way reality works. And I understand that history will remain the same as long as motherfuckers' motivations remain the same. So history is not repeating itself for nothing. History is repeating itself for a reason. And most of that reason is because endeavors are still the same. So if endeavors are wrong or if endeavors are negative, then the end result is going to be negative all the time. And, but in reality, all of it is still an equation. But never mind all that. After seeing this, this is power. After I did what this, I just did, this is power. And I know the power in this after playing with this calculator. And the only way I can prove my power is if you follow me for 10 years. Simple. 
the other step that you can take is you can go into one of my affiliate links that I'll put at the bottom of my description and you can go into any one of these exchanges, which are trusted exchanges. And most of these exchanges are FDIC approved and FDIC insured because I think along those lines, security wise as well, I have to. I'm out here publicly speaking about my assets. So I'm not going to refer you to an exchange that's not good the exchanges that i'm dealing with uh exchanges built for beginners like myself i'm a beginner investor i haven't been doing this but since year 2021 after losing my mom in december of 2020 so that was like literally my first month january maybe year 2021 and i really didn't do anything in january i really started getting a little bit more aggressive in march maybe april-ish and so i don't know a lot i'm a beginner you know, and which is the reason why my style is unorthodox. My approach is unorthodox. I have a baby mindset that's willing to be molded into something that's totally different from most people's mindset that's already in the industry for a while. But I know one thing that all people in the industry for a while can share and say that is true, and that is, is what I say. No matter whether I'm emphasizing on it really well or really good, I have a way of putting it, versus the way that they don't emphasize on it as much. But they know that if they seen this video and they hear me say what I say, that I'm not lying. <laughs> They'll probably scratch their head like, why am I not talking about the same approach? You know, but it, it is what it is. All I'm doing is jumping on the bandwagon for another 15 years, you know, and I'm doing it at perfect timing. It all comes back to time. You know, I'm doing that perfect time. If you look at the stock market back to the 1800s, you'll see it ain't too many dips in the stock market, but it totally traveled up the whole time. And right now, I just so happen to be in year 2020, uh, 22, or whatever, 23, and be investing, which is a really good time for the whole overall market to be investing in. I'll, you know, Fed just pumped out a lot of money in our economy, record numbers of money. And, you know, now we're suffering from it. And right now is the best time to be buying. And a lot of people, even big guys, are jumping off the market. But right now, what I'm learning is that some of the bigger, big, big wigs, while they're saying that everything is going down, 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 inflation, recession, and CPI numbers, and, you know, Fed increasing hikes and all this other crap, I still see these guys buying. It's kind of weird. <laughs> the guys with all the power sneak sneak buying like right behind our back and they buying up everything so they own everything while the retail investors are getting scared and they're running and taking their money out you know you know which is you know kind of screwed up because one thing i learned is that this market is already controlled is already rigged up out of especially in year 2022 21 23 you know when you look at the portfolios of some of these asset management companies you know, BlackRock and, you know, Vanguard and <laughs> you name them, man. Um, these guys, they own everything. They already own everything. They can literally control this market whenever they want, technically speaking. So you have to be on another, I guess, another level of intelligence, I guess, to, you know, maneuver around these people's actions and still end up profitable at the end of it all. And then you got laws and new law, and you got new laws and new legislations that are being stepped in to get rid of the retail investors and, you know, hurt them a little bit more with taxation and tariffs and stuff like that. So, you know, it makes it a little harder for the smaller guy to get money, you know, to be totally honest with you. But there's always a way in my mindset. I've been dealing with stuff like that all my life. It's like Miss Pac-Man. I've been, I've been running from that all my life. So, you know, I'm, you know, that's my responsibility. My responsibility is to sneak through the back door. My responsibility is to take the impossible and make it possible. So, and that's what I'm trying to do. And everything that I'm promising, when I say 10x, that's almost impossible. Uh, it's even more impossible to expect 100x and then bring back a 10x promise. <laughs> it's almost impossible. Um, especially when the market and everybody else is jumping out the market and everything is just falling to pieces. The world is going through a change, the biggest change it's ever gone through. We're literally about to go from fiat dollar bills to probably be illegal to have a dollar like literally we're going through that as a world so you have you know for anybody making any promises especially about a person of my avion of my statue of my background to be making promises like this to me i think it's kind of extraordinary but i'm gonna hold tight to my promise 
and I get a feeling to do what it is that I'm doing, and I also pass it along while I'm doing it. And I, my promise is that my page will always be for free. I'll never take an endorsement from nobody. If you hear me talking about affiliates or anything like that, that's because that's something I personally invest in. <laughs> or that's a piece of knowledge that I'm personally giving you. If you see any of the affiliates in any of my links, that's affiliates that I literally personally have a partnership or a business with, and I chose to market that affiliate because of it's substantialness to maybe the public, how it would help you. Anything from astrology down to card counting or investing, anything that I put up, I'm either already invested in it or I'm a partner with it. And that's why it's on my page for advertisement. I call it my partner sites, you know, and all of those things have something to do with either a better life, whether it comes to self, wealth, health or truth. Or it has something to do with maybe investing or maybe something to do with spirituality or energy or something of that nature, which is the basis of all my channels on YouTube and the other channels that I have elsewhere, like Facebook and stuff like that. So that's what it's all about. Look, I'm going to go right back in here uh, just briefly real quick because the video is kind of long. I'm already at 41 minutes. And then I'm going to briefly show you some of my assets so you can compare my assets to my last video and see the difference in the two and the progress that I've made since then, even while dealing in the bear market. One second. Okay, we're back. Here we go. All right, so you see the first one. Like I said, I want to get a few of those over top of it. Uh, Apple, I got NVIDIA. Um, my logic behind Apple, just real briefly, is in a nutshell, Apple owns, uh, they own a lot. They're in a lot of different sectors of a lot of very important aspects of the world. You know, everything from fintech uh, payment systems and, you know, being able to take payment systems, you know, online and, you know, you know, and not even just on, you know, web, you know, two, but web three, you know, metaverse and all, and their investments in the metaverse. Not just that, they're locked down on the industry when it comes to cloud, um, you know, uh, um, uh, phones, uh, te technology period, they're locked down the way they have a lockdown and a stronghold, their whole marketing. Um, <laughs> aside from that, they're even they coming out with an Apple car <laughs> that never, nobody's talking about, nobody's talking about that. Um, yeah. They're probably in the not to mention when they talk when you're talking about cash flow, when you're talking about revenue, talking about profit, geez me, Christmas, when you talk about stock back, you know, stock kickbacks and how they, you know, hold their, you know, maintain their stock kickbacks and, you know, cash in hand and all like this company's almost it's almost astronomical. This company's like a, a number one rated company. I there ain't too many companies that can give Apple a competition right now. That's even if they didn't even step into the, you know, the automobiles. If they just stayed doing what they were doing and not even touch automobiles or, you know, robotics or anything. If they just stayed to doing what they were doing, they just, they just a bomb. You know, NVIDIA, man, these guys, nobody, I, I think these guys have slept on a little bit, you know. I think a lot of people know about NVIDIA, but I think they're a little slept on. They got their hands in everything. And everything that's important, uh, even in space. I mean, I, these guys got their hand in everything. Um, Microsoft, same thing. A plus company, great cash flow, uh, great uh, stock back ratio statistics, um, great cash on hand. Um, man, it's powerful powerhouse um, block. Uh, I guess you could say fairly new company. Um, they're in the fintech mainly, um, but Block. I think Block probably be the number one. Uh, probably for more than ten years, they'll probably hold the number one spot, if not maybe the number two or three spot, uh, when it comes to fintech and you know the whole Web three and taking payments and the whole startup of the metaverse and all that other stuff. I think they'll have a real good foot in. And aside from that, they have good foot in the retail market right now. You know with the upgraded, upgraded payment systems and the way they're able to take payments and things like that, even, in, you know, down to the, some of the smallest retailers, you might find a black, a blo I'm sorry, a block a payment system inside your local corner ghetto store with bulletproof glass up. Like, they're, they're, they're in your hoods, you know. 
and people scanning their phones and shit. They're probably using Block. Um, no, Tesla, don't even need to talk about Tesla. And I talked to y'all a little bit earlier about talking about the history of these stocks. You can see in Tesla, that's a stock that I told you about a little earlier. It's one thing to get tremendous growth from, let's see, October year 2019, where Tesla went from $20 all the way up to, you know, more than $371 in just two years from October to October. In two years, it went from $20 to $371. That's more, that's a 15X um, in just two years. But how, if I did this on a calculator, even at a 15X versus a 10X over 10 years, even at a 5X over 10 years, I would make much more money than I would off Tesla, you know, doing such a large growth in such a short period of time from year 2019 to 2022. That's three years of growth and they've grown 15% in just three years. You don't need me to tell you that I would make much more money off of, let's say, Apple over the long term than I would off of Tesla, especially after I did the calculations. And I swear, man, you can be in this industry and you can stare at these damn graphs until you fucking turn green in the eyeballs and you can watch all the videos you want and do all the due diligence that you like and all the dividends and all the options trading and all the other crap you want to go invest your time and and effort into but out of the all the things that's the single most important things is the factor that i just shown you and that is, is the difference between a tesla and an apple you know especially when you're talking about over long term you know yeah tesla outperformed apple obviously 15x apple maybe 11x you know but at the same time, Apple did it over 10 years. Tesla did it over three years. The growth, but the different, the end result difference between the two is exponential. It's not even worth talking about. And people who play with money and understand money very well is people who do that. You know, you'll see, you'll look at it, uh, a Warren Buffett's account and you'll be like, well, damn, why does he keep choosing these stocks that are only growing or has an expected growth or he only expects it to grow maybe 10% to maybe 20% to maybe, if he's lucky, 30%. It, it's because he understands exactly what I just told you. He's not trying to look for no fucking stock that shoots up through the fucking ceiling like Tesla just did in three years. He's laughing at your ass when he's sitting there putting a billion dollars into something that's grown like an apple over 10 years. He's literally laughing at you. It's one thing for me to put that figure $100 in there that i show you. Imagine if I put a million dollars in fucking apple in over 10 years. I'm a fucking billionaire. No, I'm a trillionaire. No questions asked. If I just put boy, one stop, put it in the apple... And put it in there for 15 years, put a billion dollars in, I'm, I'm sorry, one million dollars in Apple. I'm a trillionaire in 10 years, period. No ifs, ands, what's, buts about it. That million, and uh, it's hard to go from a billion to a trillion. But I can, I can put it on paper, and I can guarantee you, I'm speaking off the top of my neck, but I can guarantee you that if I put a million dollars in that same spot that I put that hundred dollars in, I can guarantee you my growth would be that many figures more. It simply would be that many zeros more. So that's a million is a seven figure. So you got six zeros. I'll throw six zeros into a hundred and that's what I'll have at the end of the 10 years. That's a trillion. I got my two zeros. I got, and I'll throw my two zeros into my six zeros.